All right, so I'm going to keep this video really simple. I've been working a lot of uh, hours lately, and so kind of beat. I haven't been making videos either, so figured I'd start off again slowly. So we have here a converter that I bought. So it takes in 5 volts. It's a USB. You just plug directly into anything USB. I have a solar panel. My uh, daughter's borrowing it. Portable one for charging phones. And it has one of these USB outputs. Unfortunately, the uh, top of it is right along the uh, the board. And so you can't really plug it in the, the board like it's if this is raised a bit. So I think, uh, I, think I bought some uh, plugs where I can plug this into a female side and there's a male side where it's flat but in any case that's uh, that's one problem but uh, it outputs to this barrel plug and it has a couple other plugs right here that came with this and uh, we can output either 12 volts or 9 volts so I was looking at it today I think this was 10 bucks but uh, it should be uh, less than 11 bucks and uh, so for the uh, input here we got the 5 volts that's at the 2 amps according to the Amazon listing and the output is 1 amp but I'm pretty sure that's at 9 volts and these are maximum values by the way uh, you probably shouldn't try to keep it at their maximum values at all the time but you can get up to 1 amp I'm pretty sure that's for 9 volts because elsewhere it says 0.7 amps so I'm guessing that's for the 12 volts what you're doing you're trading current for voltage you're taking some of the current and and the voltage and turning some of that current into more voltage but then you lose the uh, current so in any case I also have this uh, wall wart here and I don't know if we'll be able to focus but uh, we got 3 volts there and then 4.5 the voltage goes up until 12 volts and this one also the has a plug like this but there's adapters like that so this is uh, what I'll always use when uh, I have the uh, outlet power and then this one's intended more for uh, solar and stuff where I can easily get 5 volts and uh, USBs are common there's portable power supplies so I'm planning on doing projects with portable power supplies in the future and they use this a lot so I bought this converter, but uh, let's look at it in a simple breadboard circuit now. And actually, we got a little more to do before we can do a circuit. So I bought these, I think I bought 10 of uh, each of these uh, barrel plugs. So you can screw down wires into there and uh, plug them on there. So the wires can come from whatever you want and go to whatever you want. And it fits nicely on here. So. This is the only one I'm going to have to add wires to so that we can power the uh, breadboard from uh, this output. So now I got the uh, screwdriver. Make sure that uh, it fits really snug with the screws so that we don't strip them out. And I got a, a couple wires here. So these came with a kit that I got. kit that Radio Shack sold. And... They're a 22 American wire gauge. I'm going to get them about the uh, same length. And we'll make them. It's probably longer than we need. But uh, that's alright. Better to get it longer than too short. Down at the bottom here. If I uh, put both wires there. Try to keep them the same length. And squeeze the trigger. A little blade comes up. And uh, snips both of the wires. Really nicely. And then. Neither side is stripped yet, so we're not going to need a lot of wire, so I'm going to slide this up to the shortest setting I can. Uh, I'm going to need a lot of bare wire, and that's all we got to do. Just set it in there, and uh, this one's bent at the end, so let's straighten it. And uh, just put it right to that tongue, and the tool does the rest. You just squeeze the trigger. So it's the same trigger squeeze for uh, stripping them as it was for snipping them and just straighten that out 
And now we have two, a red and a black wire that should be about uh, equal in length. Okay, so now I already got one wire in, but you can see that the polarity is indicated on there. So I put the black one to uh, the negative, and so we got this little slide here. You just slide it in, and I think I would actually hook this wire next time I do it, but uh, I already have that one in, so I'm going to put the red one in the same way and uh, set it down and uh, get that in there. So, and it does kind of shift the wire when you do this. So, when the screw's all the way up, it's loose, and then you turn it uh, clockwise and it just screws down. There we go, I can feel it getting tighter. So I think you can use pretty large wire with these things. There we go. Clamp it down pretty hard and tugging pretty hard. It's holding pretty nicely. Okay, so now we're going to plug it uh, into the breadboard. And uh, that's pretty simple. I already bent these. So now these are solid wires. They're not stranded wires. Stranded wires bend better. Uh, solid wires bend pretty easy, but if you bend them a lot, they're going to break off. And so let's uh, let's put them up here. So we'll plug one in there and one in there. If their length is a little bit off, you can just kind of shift which uh, hole you put them in. But that's it. That's all we had to do for uh, plugging them in. So we have it up here. We're going to power it with this uh, breadboard power supply there. So let's grab the adapter. It has this right here, this is an output for the power supply. Now the power supply, I said before that we can input two amps to this. That's maximum of course, you don't want to do that all the time. The breadboard power supply is limited to uh, I think 0.7 or 0.5 amps, something like that at uh, 5 volts. Again, you want to look at the person that, or the company that made it and look at their specs. But in any case, we plug that into there. The other side of this uh, converter, we plug into the uh, barrel jack there. And we should be good to go. So we have that plugged in. Let's get uh, some LEDs. And now we'll test this. This is the first time I've ever powered anything with this uh, converter. So we have a resistor on both of these boards that start at the power, the red power rail, come to the anode, the long lead of the LED, short lead, the cathode of the LED, one more row down, connects to ground on uh, both of them. And so let's turn the power on. And uh, now you can see the blue LED at the 9 volts. We have it flipped to 9 volts. So we're getting 9 volts on that side, 5 volts on that side. This is a 1 kilo ohm resistor, by the way, because we're going to be using 12 volts. So you don't want to use slightly more resistance to uh, keep the power rating below an eighth of a watt, but it's still well below a quarter watt, so we should be okay for this short period of time. So in any case, it should be pretty obvious. This one's quite a bit brighter, but when I put my fingers next to it, you can see it lights up my finger quite a bit more. Cameras don't pick up uh, the light brightness the same way as the eye does. Now I'm going to flip it to uh, 12. You can see the 12 volt on there. And you should have seen that it got a little bit brighter too. And it's uh, really lighting things up. So since this is a 1 kilo ohm resistor, the amount of current going through the LED is going to be the voltage divided by 1,000. That's going to give it it's milliamps so if you don't include the LED drop this is a 5 volt so that would be uh, 5 milliamps and 12 volts that would be at uh, 12 milliamps so the current's still well below the LEDs the LEDs are also going to drop a volt uh, about 2 volts you know so actually this is probably going to be about 3 milliamps and that about uh, 10 milliamps and I figure, why not take some multimeter measurements? So also, that uh, light brightness is uh, under low light setting. As we increase the light brightness of the uh, external uh, light, not the uh, LED light brightness, you can definitely see that one's uh, quite a bit brighter than that one. That's at 12 volts. Let's drop her down to uh, 9 volts. And uh, 
So not a dramatic change from there. So in any case, we will uh, measure first voltage. Why not? Make sure we got things right. So first, we will measure this one. And we got 5 volts, as we expected. The wires are kind of tangled up. Now we'll measure the other one with the adapter set at uh, 9 volts. You can see it's 9 volts. Now we'll flip it to 12. And you can see we got 12 volts there. So good. These are the first measurements I've taken of it. Uh, so far so good. So this is an auto ranging meter. That's why I grabbed it instead of my normal one. Now I'm going to flip it to measure milliamps. And my other meter, I got to move the red jumper for milliamps, but this one I don't. And uh, makes it pretty simple. Actually, we got to open up the circuit. I'm not going to film that. I'll just jump to where the circuit is open. Okay, so I turned the power off, moved the jumpers down. It's best to turn the power off whenever you're making adjustments to the circuit. Now we got the power back on. The circuit's open. We got to complete the circuit through the meter. So, I mentioned first to make the math easier, we take the power supply voltage divided by a thousand ohms. And uh, so, five volts, we're going to bypass the LED. And uh, there you can see it's about five milliamps of current. That makes the math easy. The math gets a little more hard with the LED. We have to take the voltage drop of the LED, but it's about 2 volts. So we're going to have about 2 volts less, 3 volts. So now you can see through the 1 kilo ohm resistor, we have about 3 milliamps. And uh, that's what I was uh, explaining before. So we're going to do the same thing over here. I was talking about 12 volts, so we'll just measure right at the resistor. We can either connect the resistor there or the uh, LED up there either one it's the same row uh, that's the long lead the anode of the LED and uh, we got uh, about 12 milliamps so that's the 12 volts divided by a thousand ohms will give us about a point uh, zero uh, one two milliamps now with the LED of course it will drop about two volts and so we'll have closer to uh, 10 milliamps so these numbers aren't exact. There's a little uh, fluctuation, but there you can see, you know, that uh, the current's going to go down a little bit. So this is only 10 milliamps. We could uh, use a lower value resistor to get more current through the LED, but that lower value resistor uh, is going to create a lot more heat. So that's one reason why you use low voltages. Components don't get as hot. You don't waste as much energy. Let's flip this to nine. Take the same reading. Now at the resistor, directly from the resistor about 9 milliamps, and uh, I was kind of jiggling it a little bit, that's why it was so erratic, but it's about 9 milliamps, but if we also go through the LED, it's going to drop about 2 volts, so as you can see, it's about 2 milliamps uh, lower.